Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. A torn plantar plate can be one of the most frustrating injuries for a runner. Now, a runner who has been following many of the suggestions regarding ways to reduce the stress and strain on the plantar plate ligament has been treating the injury on her own and she was getting better. Then, she recently got a setback and understandably got super frustrated. But like most strong runners, she's focusing on the possible solutions instead of wallowing in self-pity. Now, she just wrote in and said, I've had a bilateral plantar plate strains or a tear left worse than right following months of skipping, which progressed to single leg skipping, causing a plantar plate strain. That was back in January this year, after which I wore a surgical boot on my left foot for six weeks. Now, during that time, I began similar but less severe plantar plate sprain pain in my right foot and I progressed to wearing Hoka running shoes which allowed me to walk almost normally at first and I stayed away from the gym for many months. Now a few weeks ago I accessed your recommendations for plantar plate healing and implemented them and over the past few weeks I had attended cycle classes and the occasional step class with modifications like no lunging, jumping, etc. Now feeling better this week I attended a cycle class on Monday and a step class on Tuesday instead of having a rest day in between classes and I ended up having two painful burning feet under the toes. This is very depressing. I'm wondering whether it's worth trying the following. Number one, massage. Number two, ultrasound therapy. And number three, plasma therapy. I look forward to your thoughts on this as I'm desperate to be able to even walk barefoot without pain, to be able to run on the treadmill and jump. Allison. Well, first of all, Allison, thank you for sharing your story and sending in your question. Now, there, of course, are very few things more demoralizing than realizing you've lost some ground in your recovery. So first and foremost, you have to understand that even if you do get a flare up of the plantar plate sprain, it's it's very rare that you actually get so much damage to the ligament that it puts you back to day one. So healing is a continual process. You cannot forget that. So don't give up hope just yet. Now, all the basic treatments that I teach to runners are in the plantar plate brain course for runners, and those are really all the things you can do yourself. There are many other treatments that are not even discussed in the course that can help speed up the plantar plate ligament healing. So let's talk about each of the three different treatment options you've asked about and are currently considering. The first one is massage therapy. A massage therapy is an excellent way to promote healing for runners. In fact, I'm such a fan of massage therapy for runners that a couple of years ago, I actually recorded an entire podcast interview and episode about massage therapy. So check out Doc on the Run podcast episode number 63, How Massage Helps Runners Run More and Avoid Injury. Now that episode is going to help you understand a lot of stuff about how runners and triathletes can use massage as a tool to simply run more, train more, train harder, work out more, build your fitness more with a lower risk of injury. But massage therapy isn't just a way to speed your recovery after a hard workout. And if you really think about it, any overtraining injury is really just an overblown version of the same kind of tissue damage you get as a consequence of training. Now, one way massage therapy will help you heal faster is that it will help mobilize and remove some of the chronic inflammatory fluid that can actually slow down the ligament repair process. Now, the way this works is that, you know, when you see a massage therapist, somebody who's highly qualified as a sports massage therapist, and they massage you, it actually serves to push all of those metabolic waste products and degradative enzymes out of your foot and back into your lymphatic systems where they can be removed. And another way that massage therapists will help you heal from a running injury is that it can actually loosen up tight muscle groups and tendons that are basically increasing the force applied through your foot when you walk. Just think about your foot as a lever on the end of your leg. The stiffer that lever the more force going through the forefoot and the plantar plate ligament whenever you walk and push off. So just by getting a massage and loosening up all those tight, soft tissues in the back of your legs, you can potentially decrease some of the forces going through the plantar plate area. As I've said over and over, one of the most important aspects of healing a plantar plate injury is to decrease the stress and strain applied through the plantar plate ligament while you are healing. So check out episode number 63 and then find a qualified massage therapist to help you. 
All right, the second thing is ultrasound therapy. Ultrasound therapy is not something you can do yourself at home, but you can certainly do it if you see a physical therapist. Ultrasound therapy can stimulate healing in a number of different ways, but probably the most important is because it increases localized blood flow in tissues that don't normally have great perfusion. The plantar plate ligament is mostly made up of collagen. It's very dense, and because it is so dense, it doesn't have a lot of room for blood vessels running through it. So anything you can do to increase the blood flow in and around the plantar plate ligament has the potential to increase the speed of healing. Now, you have to see a licensed healthcare professional like a physical therapist to get ultrasound therapy. You also have to have a prescription specifically for ultrasound therapy as a component of physical therapy. So if you're going to physical therapy, make sure your doctor specifies ultrasound therapy as one of the treatment modalities the physical therapist can use to help you heal your plantar plate sprain. Now, the third treatment you mentioned was plasma therapy. And plasma therapy, if I understand your question correctly, is probably referring to platelet-rich plasma or PRP injection therapy. Now, I started working with platelet-rich plasma or PRP injections almost 20 years ago. Back then, the treatment was pretty new, and I actually started a clinical trial at a university hospital to see whether or not platelet-rich plasma could heal soft tissue injuries or whether or not platelet-rich plasma had the potential to speed up surgically induced fracture healing. To get approval for a clinical trial like that on human beings takes a lot of work. So I basically had to read pretty much everything that had ever been published on the subject and then write a research proposal outlining all the protocols to see if we could get institutional review board approval to conduct the study. Now basically, even though that was a huge amount of work, I feel like I'm really fortunate to have been involved in that project because it gave me a deep understanding of how PRP tissues can actually help heal things. And Anytime you're trying to heal a running injury, you really want something that's going to work. And the truth is there's a lot of conflicting research regarding platelet-rich plasma, but there is a growing consensus about its effectiveness in tendon and ligament injury recovery. Virtually every time I lecture at medical conferences about tendon and ligament injuries in athletes, I discuss platelet-rich plasma treatments. And I always ask doctors in the audience to raise their hands you know, if they do PRP injections for injuries like the plantar plate. There's no question that the number of hands going up in the audience at medical conferences when I ask, you know, who is using PRP for plantar plate sprains, well, that's definitely on the rise. Now, so I've done other podcast episodes discussing PRP injections, so I'm not going to go into a great, you know, amount of detail here about how exactly it works, but in short, all the cofactors for healing you really need to set about the process of healing and injured tissue are contained within the platelets in your bloodstream. When you separate the platelets from your blood and then you inject those platelets directly into the tissue, it's basically like turning a key to unlock the healing process in that tissue, but it's not magical. The healing still has to happen. I have a very high success rate with PRP injections, but that is not because I have a magical machine or some kind of Midas touch. The main reason I see success with PRP injections is because I work with young healthy, athletic patients who are motivated and physiologically primed to heal. These are people who have been doing activity most of the time for decades. I don't work with old, unhealthy, sick patients who have not been active their entire lives, not people who've been sedentary their entire lives. So the patients I see and work with are people like you listening to this podcast right now. You're simply much healthier and physiologically far more capable of healing than the general population. That is because you are and have been active for years. That really stacks the deck in your favor. Now, another reason I have high success rates with PRP injections is that I treat patients very aggressively in terms of strict non-weight bearing and immobilization in a fracture walking boot for a short period of time following the injection. Now, just today, I saw an advertisement on social media regarding PRP injections, and it claimed basically zero downtime. Now, in that sense, it does sound a bit like magical fairy dust that can stimulate healing even if you decide to go for a jog that day, but trust me, it doesn't work that way. Many of the doctors I call on at these conferences are in the audience. They are lecturing. They're other experts. And they've also been invited to speak at the conference and teach other doctors. And almost all the time I call on one of these doctors for a question about PRP injections and plantar plate injuries, those doctors will say 
that the PRP injection is the last thing they will try before they consider surgery. So what that really means to you is if you're going to have a PRP injection, if you're going to be willing to spend the money and re-injure the plantar plate with that injection, you really want to make sure that you have the best chances of success. That means you should take time off work. You should plan to use crutches. You should plan to use a fracture walking boot. Give it a few days to really and truly start to recover and heal in earnest. Now, not everyone needs a PRP injection, but if you feel like your recovery is really stagnating, not that you just had a minor setback, but you really feel like you've hit a plateau and just cannot make progress, you just have to add something to get your healing back on track. That could be massage. That could be ultrasound. It could be PRP. But you have to find what's going to be best for you. And as long as you find the right treatment for you at your stage of healing, you will get back to running as quickly as possible. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.